वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडियो विद डॉक्टर मोहम्मद ताहिर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द अलावेबल डिफ्लेक्शन इन केस ऑफ स्टील बीम्स तो वैन वी आर डिजाइनिंग द स्टील बीम वी नीड टू डिजाइन फॉर आल टाइप ऑफ पॉसिबल फेलियर मोड सो द फेलियर मोड एज वी हैव डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज दैट मे बी आई दर द लोकल इंस्टेबिलिटी आर द ग्लोबल इंस्टेबिलिटी आर इंस्टेबिलिटी रिलेटेड टू लेटरल टारिजनल बकलिंग or it may be the shear failure or it may be failure because of the deflection so if the deflection of the beam are excessive mean if these deflection are more than the allowable deflections so then we can say that the beam is unsafe or beam is failing so we need to perform or we need to apply this check on the deflection of the beam and the actual deflection of the beam should be less than the allowable deflections so this deflection check is a serviceability limit state check and this thing need to be noted that we check this deflection at the serviceable limit serviceability limit state mean we apply this check at the service load instead of factor load and hence it is applied using the service loads and not the factor loads so we need to check the deflection at service loads instead of factor loads further for seal structure this check is usually applied only using the service live load and the deflection due to dead loads are not considered so in case of steel structures we apply this serviceability check or the deflection check only for the service live loads we do not consider the dead loads for checking the deflection the reason for not including the dead load in the deflection in the calculation of deflection is that the structure is given a negative camber during the construction to balance the dead load deflection so at the initial stages so whatsoever the deflection can happen because of the dead load so we can give a upward camber to the structure so when the dead load will act so it will straighten up so the only deflection will be because of the applied live load so that's why we need to consider the deflection only for the live loads and live loads at the service stage okay so the next is why we need to consider this deflection check so there are several justification for limiting service live load deflection some of which are under so why we need to limit the deflection of the beam at the service loads so the first reason is the deflection produced should not be visible to the people so the common people can consider a uh, excessive deflection or visible deflection as a failure or impending failure so it is important to remember that some deflection always occur which can measure which can be measured by instruments so common people may consider a structure unsafe and dangerous that is completely safe from strength point of view if the deflections are large so if the deflection of the beam is significantly large that it can be visualized it is visible to the common people so in that case the occupant or the common people can feel unsafe and he can consider that the building is failing or building is dangerous to sit under under it so the second reason is the appearance of the structure may be damaged so by excessive deflection such as the plaster may crack and other surface finishes may be disturbed so because of the deflection of the beam so the floor of the finishes of the structure can be damaged so the third reason to limit the deflection of the beam is excessive deflection in a member may change other member attached to it or may damage the other member attached to it for example if i give the example of primary and secondary beams we have these primary beams for example this one primary beam and we have our also the secondary beam so the deflection of this primary beam will cause the stresses in this secondary beam so if the deflection of this beam is sufficiently large so it can cause the damage of this secondary beam so the excessive deflection in a member may damage other members attached to it or the roof or the roof slab can be damaged because of the excessive deflection of the beam so for example deflection produced in a main beam may cause high extra stress in the secondary beams and roofing resting on it 
as I have explained in this figure. So the fourth reason to limit the deflection is in case of structure is supporting any type of machinery the deflection of one part may disturb the alignment of the machinery so if there is delicate machinery so in that case the deflection of beam or the some part of the structure can damage the alignment of the machinery so the fifth reason to limit the deflection is sometime it may be required that the different part of the structure deflect by same amount when symmetric loads are applied on them the so next is the limitations on the deflection so we need to see what are the limits on the deflection what is the maximum and minimum limits or minimum what are the maximum allowed deflections in case of beams so, so in case of building the maximum live load deflection is usually limited to l over 360 so for example if we have a beam with a span l is equal to 3.6 meter so in that case the allowable deflection will be equal to 10 millimeter mean 3 3600 divided by 360 so it will give us uh, allowable deflection of 10 millimeter this limit is considered invisible not damaging the surface finishes if we keep the deflection of the beam lesser than this value so in that case the deflection of the beam will not damage the surface finishes so the deflection may be limited to L over 1500 or L over 2000 for structure supporting delicate machinery. So if our structure is supporting a delicate machinery, so in that case we can limit the deflection to a lower value, so which is L over 1500 or L over 2000 or some other value. So in case of bridges, the deflection due to live load and impact load are restricted to L over 800. For example, if the span of the beam is 8 meter. So in that case, allowable deflection will be equal to 10 millimeter. So during the initial proportion of steel beams, it is customary to indirectly control the deflection by limiting the span over depth ratio for the member. So at the initial stages, when we don't have the section properties of the member and we cannot calculate the actual deflection of the member, so in that case we can limit the or we can control the deflection of the beam by limiting the span over depth ratio of the member. For example, in case of concrete beam, we have a thumb rule that if we have a beam of 1 feet, so the depth of the beam will be equal to 1 inch. Mean the depth is equal to 1 inch per feet. So if the beam is of 10 feet, so the depth of the beam will be equal to 10 inches. So this is the thumb rule in case of concrete beam. So similarly we can also limit the deflection of the beam by limiting this L over D ratio, span over depth ratio of the beam. So when these conditions are satisfied it is more likely that the deflection check to be performed later on will be satisfied eliminating the need for greater number of trials to get a reasonable section. So if we limit this L over D ratio of the member to a certain value, so in that case we can control the deflection of the beams. So typical span over depth ratios used for the various type of member are as under. So for buildings, span over depth ratio is usually limited to the maxim uh, maximum of 5500 over Fy. So this L over D span over depth ratio should be less than 5500 over Fy. So if we rearrange this equation for D, so we can get the expression for D minimum and D minimum or the D should be more than Fy time span divided by 5500 and for the steel of A36 steel, for A36 steel, so this D minimum should be more than L over 22. So at the initial proportioning of the beam, so we can satisfy this condition that D minimum should be more than L over 22 in case of A36 steel. Similarly, in case of bridges, we can limit this L over D ratio to less than 20, mean D should be greater than L over 20 or we can say D minimum is equal to L over 20. So we can satisfy this condition at the initial proportioning of our beam section. Similarly for roof purlins, so this L over D ratio should be less than 6900 over Fy and it will be equal to 
27.5 for a36 steel mean l over d should be less than equal to 27.5 or we can say d minimum should be equal to l over 27.5 so the minimum depth of the section should be equal to l over 27.5 so the actual expected deflections may be calculated using the mechanics principle however the result given in a manual and handbook may also be directly used so at the initial stages we will control the deflection or we will select a section by considering this span over depth ratio or we can say we by considering the d minimum value and then at the later stage we will cal we can calculate the actual value of deflection and then we will compare it with the allowable deflection l over 360 or l over 1500 200 or l over 800 based on the required condition or based on the actual condition.